everyone, welcome back to QSR Nation, your weekly source of food service marketing and business strategies for success. Here are your hosts, Josh, Beth, Tony, and Grant from the PFS Brands National Headquarters in Holt Summit, Missouri. Hey everybody, welcome back to QSR Nation. How'd you like that new intro? That courtesy of Beth. Oh, wow. I thought it was quite lovely. <laughs> you guys haven't even heard it yet. But. No, I haven't heard it. That's okay because we listen to our own podcast. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about menu creation and kind of the product mix that you have at your location. Um, obviously, this can be between your demographics of your town, regionality. Is that even a word? Regionality? regionality it is now. Regionality. regionality. Mm-hmm. Um, so you got to be very cognizant of this. Um, Grant, this was your topic. I know you're curious about it. So lead it away. All right. Well, um, there's just a few considerations um, to think about when you're going through and creating a menu or adding things to your menu, um, you want to basically stick with your core products and have that be the focus. Uh, For one, the employees that are making those products, it's probably something they're used to and better at. Um, So if you start adding in other products that they don't like, that maybe it's more tedious product uh, process. um, More time consuming or something. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very labor intensive. You know, that may not be the, it kind of drags their day down. So then it takes away from their enjoyment of uh, making their core products and stuff like that. So, um, and you also, you don't want to uh, add too many things to your menu because it can just also become labor intensive. Uh, There is something to be said for just keeping it simple and doing a few things really great rather than a bunch of things averagely. So Absolutely. And, you know, in in restaurants, whether it's in, uh, large chains or you know mom and pop you know single unit locations um, having diversity through you know the menu offering but still having it based off of a few core items so you can do multiple things with it you know it really is very helpful in that efficiency game so yeah I'm 100 sure I actually feel really weird today because this is the first time in 80 episodes I sat beside you when we did one Tony <laughs> I know this is <laughs> so a little dirty, so a little strange. I was, Everyone listening, just understand that we have made some changes, uh, mainly in our seating arrangement here in the studio. I really, and I really messed this up. Yeah, and it's just weird, okay? Um, so it's, the flow is a little messed up. Yeah, it's just, I mean, we're going to have to figure this out. We I mean, can't give Anthony the evil eye from across the table. <laughs> when you're I'm sitting next out, to buddy. me. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's just uh, 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 definitely a, a, a difference maker uh, in the flow because, like, I'm usually sitting across from Josh, and I'm. <laughs> but we're really next happy to, to have you on board, Grant. That's <laughs> yeah. the thing. That's what we're trying yeah. to get to. <laughs> Not that we jump off topic or anything, yeah. but, but we just want you all to feel menus. very included yeah. in what's going on. <laughs> but back to the menus. I know that we've uh, we've mentioned this in a previous podcast before, but you know, just figuring out, the, just like Grant said, is figuring out what items on your menu are going to be the most profitable for you. And a lot of times, those items that are the most profitable may be the most labor and intensive and your deli employees may not actually like to do that but you need to figure that out is it well worth the time of making sure that they're trained on those those items that are going to make you the best margin or is it not worth your time to try and set up that fight and that argument with deli employees who may not necessarily do their best work because it's just too much work for them so just figuring out those items and having those discussions finding the right people you know we've talked to carrie luxem finding those right people on the bus that's going to make sure that your business is what they have the same goals as what you do and that same vision and understanding what profit is going to be important to both of you well absolutely i mean you know there's the proverbial tail wagging the dog when you get too much involved in what are my employees like what do they want um versus you know your business so you know there's definitely a balance there that has to be uh, considered when creating you know new menu items and offerings and putting that out there you know and something that's great to do is test items see what you know your local flavor uh is there you know and see what what is your customer base enjoying Um, are you able to grab more market share with new item to expose people to um your brand that maybe they didn't have before but at the same time you definitely got to be careful um, because you don't want to ruin your brand reputation by you know creating too many off the wall uh, offerings that wind up being as Grant said kind of mediocre or average and not really uh, your niche uh, servings that you know your your, your well, I guess we do your bread and butter yeah your bread and butter so you know, just really make sure that you're considering all those things as you're trying new things and as you're uh, moving forward with new menu creations be creative but at the same time think through it. 
Well, I think there's something to be said there for you said testing and just do some free sampling, you know, a, a lengthy trial period for that. And I can actually see if you actually want to add it to your menu and things like that. Yeah, I mean, because you can get free sampling, people get exposure to it and it gives you, like you said, it might give you an idea that, hey, this is something that could really take off for us or maybe this is something I'm, it seems to only go over well for the crowd that comes in on Fridays and Saturdays. So maybe it's going to be a daily special type of a scenario. So lots of different things and tweaks you can do there. Sampling is a great way to expand your creativity without you know hurting your brand. Because customers typically will like to try something new, yeah. especially if you're asking them for some feedback. And you just tell us what you think, you know, and you know try this here and let us know. And that gives you very valuable, <laughs> you know, consumer data too. So. Yep. Anything else you guys want to add? I think this is a great topic. It's great. great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you guys have any questions on menu creation, reach out to it. Reach out to us at qsrnation at pfsbrands.com. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast at pfsbrands.com slash podcast. Um, and then for Josh, Beth, Tony, and now Grant, we're going to work on our seating arrangement, and we'll talk to you next <laughs> <Yeah>. time. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by Champs Chicken. For deals, discounts, and updates, check out champschicken.com slash connect. Be sure to stop by next week for another episode of QSR Nation. And be sure to check us out online at pfsbrands.com forward slash podcast. Mm -hmm.